Welcome to What the Flick, uh, episode four of Billions, Alonzo, Michelle, and Ben. Short squeeze uh, this episode. <laughs> this literally just occurred to me at this very moment. How does Axe Capital not have an Axe body spray deal? <laughs> <laughs> like we should see them all just like every <laughs> Because they're too cool for that. Yeah. I was about to say, with that much money, if they're using Axe body spray, I don't yeah. know what that says. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't knock Axe. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was very. Well. <laughs> I was reminded that when all the scenes of, of, of him hanging out with Metallica reminded me of there was an Onion piece several years ago that was like millionaire CEO loves comma causes the blues, <laughs> <laughs> and it was about uh, this guy who had like this collection of blues guitars who would travel to see these bands blah blah, blah but in the meantime was like totally exploiting his you know, employees and making them suffer. I, there's something about. When, when a rock band is at a place where they can hang out with gazillionaires with a straight face, it's like, ah, oh, yes, that's why punk happened. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, you, well, I mean, yeah, it's a, right. It's, it's the problem with success. Yeah. You, you start hanging out with successful people. Right. Um, is Metallica the group that hated Napster so yes, much? Yes, that yeah. that's okay. what I was about to say. I think they lost their support on the other end, so you have to go <laughs> with for the, the CEOs, people who want the money. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you know what? It turns out life is complicated. Um, <laughs> but that overall, those were some good scenes. And I loved that we got the FBI agent from the Americans. Yes. And, yep. his and wife. Kelly O'Coin. And, and Kelly O'Coin and his wife. Oh, and right, Terry. Right, right. She's the, the FBI agent. So the Americans is, <laughs> is all over billions. Um, uh, Kelly O'Coin, by the way, my friend, set up for apparently some significant. Yeah, as I say, his name was spoken aloud. So at, at the end, at like for a big moment. It's yeah. dollar bill. So, <laughs> so they're going to try and, I don't know the storyline yet, but uh, uh, they're going to try and get dollar bill to flip on. Uh, I loved the Maggie Siff Paul Giamatti scene at the end. I yes, loved, I love that him coming home and being like, "It was Pete Decker. You caught me on it. I got, I panicked." Sorry. Yeah. No, I, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. that. Like that, that, that was one of those. Ones, like, oh yeah, that's how you have an argument when you're in a married couple. You each, you, you, you apologize. You explain what the other person might have done better. You kind of like fix, mm -hmm. figure out how to fix it for next time. Because so often you see when people, when people in a relationship argue on shows or in movies. Whether or not it's the writer's intent, you're thinking that's oh, that's not how you argue. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. I mean, I, we, I, and of course, there's a way to she's argue poorly. There's course, a way to argue you know. poorly about that. That was that's how to argue well. Like yeah. even though she's a therapist and he has clearly bought in to therapy. I mean, they sound like they've been to counseling, and of course, they they may have. A therapist would, I think, e e eagerly go to go to counseling in her marriage. But yeah, that was clearly. She was like, yeah, okay, thanks. You could have done this. Yep, no, you're totally right. And then she's like, you know, rubbing Done. his chest, like you know. Uh, it was a that was a nice uh, that was a super nice moment. I, I thought. Well, and you have the other relationship that was kind of tested in this episode, and the, you know he stayed strong. I thought that was really cool, establishing that relationship yeah. with Malin, and they're really going for these solid relationships with these characters. Yeah, totally. It's really interesting. I mean, that was you know, I mean, they kept. Pushing it, I mean, they were like, you know, I mean, they're like plenty of good men would have caved. In yeah, that, sure. Right? You know, you didn't have, you don't have to be a scoundrel to be like, okay, by the nineteenth time she makes herself available, like, what am I <laughs> supposed to do? But that was really, it was quite beautiful, and they obviously want us to be conflicted to the extent we can be. Yeah. About yeah. Uh, uh, about Damian Lewis. No, I, I think definitely one of the things this show has going for it is that, like I said, the the bad guys are kind of good and the good guys are kind of bad and I mean they, there's, they, they all exist in this moral gray area so it's not really easy to sort of well I like him and I want him to him to go down you know it's it's, it's a it's a tricky call and think, this episode probably more than any I felt a lot more empathy that empathy that you've been talking about I felt a lot of it because of how they did the story in terms of acts I mean it was very much showing um, you know that how they intercut the dialogue from the guy who was turning on them oh, to Pete him Decker, in the yeah. moments, which was really interesting. It's kind of more of a like a, a trailer technique usually mm -hmm. than like a full episode technique. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I see that. But I but I liked it, and it definitely helped me see into his world a little better. I loved how uh, sort of contained this episode was in terms of like, here's how a single play mm -hmm. plays out that's right that you know right. here's how we go from this to this and then these people get involved and then this guy counter does and da, da, da. and and so I, I kind of felt like I was learning a lot about how this world works but then of course by the end of it I was like oh god smash the state yeah. you know because <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking like if you're the guy who started that trucking company through no fault of your own you're suddenly a pawn and all this other bullshit that these people are doing for 
to make money off of whether or not your stock doesn't rise, and if this guy says that, and then, then they're going to badmouth you in the press so that your prices will go down. It's like, this is all corrupt bullshit. Yeah, totally. Yep. And, and oh, you, nightmare. And even though I did not, and, I, and, I, and I'm certain that you did not either, I don't know about you, you probably did, <laughs> did not understand exactly what was happening. Oh, God, no. Oh, no, no. Right. no. Like, you still, <laughs> it didn't matter. You still got it. Enough, sure, right? And you were like, okay, they're doing this. They're making a play against him. He's been playing this, and now his dad. This is also insider trading, so his dad has put him at risk, right? And yep. now has to cave into the buffoon from the oh, SEC. Yes. But it did so, like, whereas last week we were so critical. Was that of, I had to give my neck to an enemy? Was that right, that's what he it? said. That's it. right. But in the in the in the 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 dog shit episode, mm -hmm. which was contrived to give Giamatti a speech. I thought, we all mm -hmm. thought, right? For sure. That, that this was the speech that he got to give to his dad on the phone this time seemed so Organic. wonderfully authentic, but so also real. was definitely a speech. But it was yeah. good. But it was good. But it had a yeah. place yeah. and it, it belonged there, yeah. Yeah. and there right. was a they reason got, to have gotten it. They got it in there. the right yeah. way here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what is the last? How did it have to end? Yeah, it was like, okay, son? say <laughs> okay, son, and then hang yeah, up. And then yeah. hang up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You will say nothing, but okay, son. Yeah, so, but then we also, so, you know, because whereas you came further around on, on Damian Lewis, I am losing my ability to hang with him in any way, um, which is interesting because I, I'm, I'm still not on board with, with these guys, with Giamatti, because these guys, they're evil too, right? I oh, mean, yeah. they're, they're the degree of, of, of motivated by power and not, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of seeking justice for everyday Americans here. No. Well, and what happened with his dad, especially? With that, with his dad, especially. Although, yeah. again, that, that makes definitely. him sympathetic. Like, you know, okay, good, he won't throw his dad under the bus. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Um, but he did make him lose a lot of money. It did, he did make him lose a lot of money and he did, he did eliminate the ability to prosecute that because part of the big payoff of the prosecution is and he made $875,000 yeah. and now, yeah. now he lost, lost, lost like half a million. Yeah. So you yeah. can't. That that you know makes prosecution almost impossible. impossible. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, like you know, on TCM, I was just we're doing some scripts and coming up sometime in, in March or April, <coughs> we're doing a, a George Roy Hill night. And uh, oh, sorry, that's like one of my favorite underrated American yeah, filmmakers. Super I'm super under, excited. Super <laughs> underrated. Um, and and obviously, I don't think I don't think Butch and Sundance is in there. The Sting is, but but mm. in talking about Butch and Sundance and the Sting. Like here you were, these were bad guys, these were criminals, these were con men and bank robbers you were rooting for. But one, they were fighting the system. They were sure. fighting, they, mm -hmm. they were going up against people more powerful than they, and they had to eat. They were working for their food, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, essentially, right? Whereas ultimately you can't root, you can't make the bad guy the good guy if the bad guy has $2 billion. Right. And mm -hmm. then if the bad guy does things like leave his friend in Canada. Yeah, you know. his friend Although, was kind of a bit of a dick, though. Totally. I was sympathetic it was a bit to of a dick, that. But, but nonetheless, I so I mean, again, if it were a normal relationship, you'd be like, Freddie, f off. Um, I, but the plane leaves at nine thirty. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I was I went back and forth on the friend because uh, yes, I mean, yeah. it's a dick move to leave somebody behind. But at the same time, it's like this guy is totally. Rather than having the conversation with you, it's just like using some overheard I, bullshit you, to try and capitalize on that. And then it's like I, I like the I love the line about how much is my how much is this friendship worth? I, I did. And, and, and then he then, out. and then he, but he then said. he gives him an amount. Like if he if if the friendship mattered enough to him, he wouldn't have told him how much. He wouldn't have taken the loan. No, totally. no I, I got. It. I liked the scene. I liked the scene. I even like leaving him dramatically. It's just revelatory <laughs> yeah. about the kind of person. Well, he sure, is. he's For still sure. awful. I don't get me but, wrong, but yeah. But I did you? <laughs> this is the problem when you mix your. Shows. I literally, I thought he's listening. I'm like, oh, his friends, he's playing an FBI agent in this show. <laughs> like, no, 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 wrong guy. It didn't even occur to me that he was just doing it to make money. <laughs> um, anyway, it was, uh, but I, I got it. Dramatically, a good scene. See, this is, yeah. this show set in the now and right. not in the 1980s. Not, not in the so. 1980s, yeah. <laughs> so what about this last play? What, I mean, they're setting us up for him selling off. Well, like clearly. That's, or he's going to make us think. They did say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. that he, They'll think you're getting out. So yeah, I guess he isn't getting out, but he's. They said he'll think, but he also get, they give that huge speech about knowing when to cut and knowing when to walk yeah, away, yeah, and so, that's what his so, job is. So they're trying to make us think something. But I he's guess, not so. like the he's not like De Niro and Val Kilmer in Heat, Heat. Mm -hmm. right? You know, the, the, he he can't walk away. I mean, it's like an addiction, and it define and because he clearly should. The signs are there, sure. right? I mean, yeah. he's got that is Pete Decker. 
like they found out it's Pete Decker, even though uh, great that the lawyer, that the that the dirty lawyer recognized. No, that van, car, she's waiting. She ch no walking away, even though. Uh, so, but he's not walking away, and he's get there. All these signs that he needs to that he needs to change, and 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 I still sense that he won't do it. Sorry. But as Pete Decker says, and I was th I always want to say Max Medina because he was on Gilmore Girls. He was on Kids Right. Uh, as Pete Decker points out. You know, he totally bankrolled his little, his shingle, and they have no way of tracing it because it's all like shadow companies and holding companies and blah, blah, blah. So just because the public face of Axe is divesting and everything doesn't mean that he can't still be manipulating and buying in and exactly. profiting from things, but just hiding himself and completely becoming a ghost in the machine, basically. That's yeah. what I was wondering uh, if they were aiming for, but maybe they're not. Maybe he'll be so addicted he won't leave, because I think that's a good point, too. Also, sure. you know, I mean, I'm just, uh, if like this is a normal Showtime show, I haven't looked, but, you know, that's their run is 12th, usually, on uh -huh. Showtime. So that's oh, eight really? episodes left, so there's... <laughs> There's he a could, lot left I, to happen. I don't he think could, he's quitting. He could get out. <laughs> he's not walking away. He could get pulled back in. You right. know? Yeah. There's a lot of lot of ways to go. Oh, and world's worst corporate spy got busted, as we knew she would. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. <laughs> just staring blatantly. I really love that scene where she's just like looking for like five minutes also, on a you, book. Right. You made you lied and confronted literally the worst person in the office, because that girl she sees everything. Oh yeah, she's yeah. on yeah. it. Yeah, and I love that she was like, yeah, I'm going to solve this right now, and I'm just coming into the stall, you know? <laughs> Dunk. Yeah, but also, as we said last week, so poorly played by the world's worst corporate spy. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, because just, Step up, tell just what's going go on. to them in the beginning. I'm being blackmailed by a guy you're desperate to get. I do have to tell you, I did a little blow off a girl's chest. Exactly. Yeah. And he's going to say... Yeah, just ignore that part. I'm not testing your hair. Don't do it again. Right. Great. Thank you. You're on the team. So stupid. So dumb. No, and it's pretty much exactly what happened. And it's going to be yes. what happened. Except, except, you, you except they'll totally never right. trust her. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, she's never yeah, going to. She's, she's going to get fired after this, yeah, I mean, or, this immediate part is or resolved. Or she's going to be, uh, you know, or she's yeah. going to be, you know, investigating whatever the whatever the crap assignment there is. She's going to be in the yeah. in the mess hall of the U.S. Traffic attorney's division. office. Traffic division. Right. No, well, we, we, the same thing's happening on The Flash where somebody had to, like, betray people on behalf of the other guy. And all he had to do was just tell the people, by the way, this guy wants me to betray you. How do we, like, then you know, collude to fix T that? TV, it's not, it's not, doesn't work well with. You know what? I'm just going to tell my boss. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, right, Three's Company would have gone off the air in That's three true. episodes. Yeah, the Americans yeah. for That's that. Right, right. That's right. <laughs> just step up and tell the truth, and you'll be a lot better off. But uh, seeing her get caught was uh, was, uh, was 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 that was tasty. That was that was satisfying. <laughs> and also, but we did there there again. There you got from the nice complicated writing. There you got from Giamatti. A, a real degree of humanity because maybe he's not going to banish her to traffic. Maybe mm -hmm. you know he was like, hey. Let's not forget who the bad guy is here. Right. Like, like they came into our house. They investigated her. They staked her out. They sent a private investigator. They set her up. Mm -hmm. You failed the setup. But the issue is not, I can't trust you. The issue is, I now really want to get Bobby Axelrod. Sure. So that was a, that was a degree of kindness in him. He's yeah. a, he's Definitely. a super, he's a, he's a grown up. Yeah, yeah. And he did say they didn't buy her. That was like the line, wasn't it? That they didn't buy her off. It yeah. wasn't that she took me. It was. Yeah, it wasn't oh, right. They didn't pay for blackmail. Like yeah, right, exactly. right. It's blackmail, and that, yeah. and he's yeah. offended by that. Yeah. So he's that playing three-dimensional yeah. chess. I'll, yeah. I'll totally give him credit for that. Um, anyway, good stuff. Uh, are you, are you a little more on board? Are you? I am. I am more on board. Yeah. I. I. You know. I'm. Like I said, even even if I don't get what's going on, I can sort of bleep over it. There. Give me enough to give me some the basic rudimentary idea of how this stuff works, and I'm enjoying the moral ambiguity of it. So yeah, I'm. I'm more on board for sure. All right. Good. We love moral ambiguity. <laughs> Michelle, thanks. Alonzo, thanks. See you next week. <laughs> Go there.